Okay, it's close enough to starting time, so we'll get started. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Kara Moncrief, and I'm the Clinical Communications Director for Sinclair, and super excited to have you guys on. Uh, I am really, really excited about today's topic. I learned a lot um, when, when putting the PowerPoint together, so I hope that you guys learn a lot, too. Um, and we'll get started. So I'm just going to share my PowerPoint with all of you guys. So give me one moment. Let me get it pulled up. All right. And of course, if you guys have um, any questions, I will um, open it up at the end to take any questions that you guys may have. Okay, so today's topic is the three types of aging. It's thinker, sagger, and wrinkler. And unfortunately, we will all fall into one of these categories. Uh, but more importantly is your, your clients, your patients, which category do they fall into? Usually you will know um, when they are right around 40 for most cases, uh, also, genetics play a big role in it too, right? So um, what was their mother's skin like? What was their father's skin like? And usually they'll know. So there are things that we can do for preventative action, uh, especially if they know when they're younger, kind of what category they fall into. Um, or of course, when we're older and we already have these issues, then how do you fix them? How do you address them? How do you make them better? All right, so the first part of my PowerPoint, we're just going to go through kind of basics of aging, what happens to, to our face. So the, all of these you guys probably already know already, right? We get the forehead lines, the frown lines, the vertical lip lines, crow's feet. Of course, that's just natural because of all the expressions that we're making, surprise faces, squinting our eyes because of the sun, laughing, smiling, drinking out of a straw or if someone smokes. Uh, throughout their life. We're going to end up with lines no matter what. Um, some may not end up with many lines though, which is, which is nice, but they'll end up with another problem. <laughs> um, our tear troughs start to get hollow. Um, there's also other changes other than hollowing. Of course, there's like creepiness, um, dark circles start to appear because our skin starts to become thinner. Um, lip border and volume really all of the volume in our face changes. Our lips are one that's that's uh, very dramatic to change, especially the, the mouth as a whole. As we age, we start to get a downward droop. For a lot of clients, we'll start to get that downward droop uh, to the corners of their mouth. Uh, our nose shape changes. Our It depends on which category the patient falls into. Either the nose will become very prominent, it looks larger as they age, and or the tip of the nose starts to droop. It's crazy, all the changes that we go through. Um, so nose shape, um, shape changes, our cheek definition is very dramatic to where when we're younger, our cheeks are very defined, uh, really like the balls of the cheek, and we start to get a flattened appearance. A lot of times our cheekbones become more prominent and the actual cheek itself so it itself starts to flatten. And on some clients, not only flattening, but drooping down. So we'll talk about, and then of course, nasal labial folds start to get heavier as we age. So this, those are kind of just like basics that most of us like fall into all of those, um, but some are much more prominent than others. And the reason being is there's really four components to it. The skin, which all of us are very probably aware of our, the skin. And um, if you've been on other webinars, you know, know the cells in the skin and how complex it is. And there's multiple layers and some layers do some things, some layers do others. But we never really talk about then what's underneath the skin and how are those things changing? And those changes lead us to the skin looking like it's an issue where a lot of times it's, it's most of the time, it's a mix of all these things or the components other than the skin can be the biggest reason. So we'll talk about the skin first though, because of course this, the skin is one of the, the big things that changes the most. 
So skin, skin thickness decreases 6% every 10 years. So right around 20 years old, our collagen production declines about 1% every year, one, one to 1.5% 1 every year. So it's inevitable. We're going to lose collagen every year. There's no stopping it. But of course, when we start younger with doing preventative measures, then that, that percent decreases because we're stimulating new collagen. Muscle. So past the age of 40, we lose approximately 1% of muscle mass per year. Well, of course, our muscles are a big contributing factor in how we look and what gives us that appearance, right? It's the strength of our muscle. It's also the amount of muscle that we have in our face. And you can think of the muscle as part underlying structure to our face. Um, another two that's the underlying structure is bone. So over the age of 35, the number of bone regenerating cells decrease in our face. What that's going to do is it's going to lead to hollowing of the eye, flattening of the cheeks, and a jaw degrade. So, you know, a lot of times when we have our older clients that really have massive issues with the um the sub q um with the submental sorry <laughs> not sub q the submental and jowling in the lower face in general it's not just skin right it's also all the other things the muscles are not as strong the the jaw itself starts to degrade and starts to kind of turn back inward uh, so, you know, a, lo a lot of issues going on there. Of course, we can't do anything for the bone in a cosmetic um, office, but just knowing these things and knowing what's changing in the face is so important when you put that plan together to really help them. Uh, and then fat, Oof, this is a big one. You know, uh, as I've been aging, I'll be 42 uh, soon. And I've just been looking at myself. I'm like, oh God, I look so much older. Like it really hit me when right around 40, 41, like I just see it, you know, I can just visually see it now. And I'm looking and I'm like, well, I don't have lines and you'll know why in a second, because I don't fall into that category. Um, you know, what's going on? Like I just, in photos, I look so mature. <laughs> I don't want to look mature. It's fine that I do, but this is one of the big reasons why we look mature, right? It's the fat loss in our face. So fat, we lose about 10% of our facial fat at 35 years. So there it explains why I've been feeling this way around 40 and an additional five to 10% every five to 10 years thereafter. So no stopping that we're, we're going to lose that overall volume that gives us the very, very youthful appearance. Um, and, and then at uh, 55 years, sorry, I just need to move my little toggle bar here. At 55 years, you may have lost 40% of your facial fat, almost half by the time we're 55, unfortunately. So what do we do to help these issues? Well, before I talk about our, our game plan on helping, we're going to talk about the, the three categories, right? What are they? So the first one, oh, nope, not yet. Sorry. One more slide. Another thing to understand, you guys have probably seen this photo a lot, right? The V-shape and the inverted V-shape and what happens. It doesn't happen to everyone. You'll see pictures of people that they're in their 60s and they still have the V-shape, but it happens to a lot of us. So V-shape, what does that mean? When we're youthful, of course we have fat everywhere, but we have a lot of fat in the upper face and we have a lot of structure, right? We have muscle strength. Our bones are, are a huge structure to our face, not just the fat. And of course the skin is taut. And our jawline typically, unless someone has a heart shaped face, is that like V, right? Where it's prominent up here with fat. Of course, there's fat everywhere though. And it comes down to a V. As we age, we lose the bone, we lose the, the strength of our muscle, we lose a lot of our facial fat. Unfortunately though, because of gravity, 
a lot of our facial fat starts to accumulate lower, plus our skin is loose, plus all those other, other things, right? We don't have the scaffolding to hold up this loose skin because we've lost bone and we've lost muscle strength, all the bad things. So we end up then with the inverted V where it becomes thinner here, we become more hollow in the upper face and it starts to become very heavy on the jaw. And that's due to fat and, and laxity of, of that appearance. So what are the three types of, of aging? So we have sinker. I use celebrities for these first few slides because I feel like a lot of us can relate to seeing a picture of a celebrity and going, oh yeah, I remember when they looked younger and like how that's changed. So sinker, Lisa, Lisa Bonet is an ideal um, example of a sinker. You can see that she doesn't have those jowls that I was just talking about, right? But you can obviously see she's not 20. Why? Because she has that gaunt, hollow, sunken appearance to her face now that she's in her 60s, I believe. Sagger, that's me, absolutely a sagger. My mom was a sagger, my grandma was a sagger. Not on my dad's side, that was different, but I definitely took on uh, the mom's side. So this is Drew Barrymore, perfect, um, perfect uh, example of a sagger where you can see that she doesn't have that sunken appearance like Lisa Bonet. Even if she was as thin as Lisa Bonet, she still wouldn't have that, that sunken appearance. What she does have though, is that inverted V, right? She's becoming much heavier on the lower face. We can see the jowling beginning. She has um, obviously looser skin and that fat accumulation here and not as much structure holding everything up up here. And then there's also things that I'm gonna point out in some of these photos. For example, you know you're a sagger, not just because of jowling, but also look under the eye and in the mid face range, you can see that that is starting to droop and drop as well. Her cheeks once when she was 20 that were up here high without the deep tear troughs are now dropping low, creating a nasal labial fold and a, and a bit more of a hollow tear trough. So there's a couple things that, that kind of happen with saggers. And then a wrinkler. I thought this was a perfect example. Uh, when you think of who wrinkles, um, for me at least, this is who I think of is Eunice Kennedy. Um, she is actually a combination. And we'll talk about that too, that a lot of times we're not just in one category. There's a lot of clients that are gonna be um, a mix of two, sometimes a mix of three, unfortunately, but usually it's a mix of two. You can be like a, a sinker and a wrinkler or a sinker and a sagger. You're usually never a sagger and wrinkler though. But for her, she is a sinker. Of course, we can see the hollows, we can see the cheekbones, um, you almost can like see the bone, um, but she was also known for having very, very, very deep wrinkles. So she's, she's very much a wrinkler. Okay, so those are our three categories. Now I'm gonna break them down. Wrinkler, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it because it's really self-explanatory. You wrinkle, that's it. Um, the other two are a bit more complex. Uh, her daughter, Maria Shriver, also falls in line with her mom, of course, genetics, usually that's just the case. And, um, and then I added here, Sean Penn. So wrinkler, clearly defined by patches of lines while the face is at rest. You can see he's not smiling, he's not making a surprised expression, but he has very, very, very deep lines. Um, the lines are typically heavier around the mouth, eyes and forehead, of course, they're areas of expression. So that is where the lines are gonna be uh, predominant. So examples are the frown lines in the mid brow, the ones, the 11s or the threes, uh, crow's feet at the outer corner of the eye, horizontal lines that run across the forehead and smoker lines around the mouth. Even if they're not a smoker, a lot of times wrinklers can just end up with the vertical lip lines. Um, wrinkles may be deep into the dermis, like Sean Penn, that is someone that you can visually look at and say, those are deep, those are reaching into the dermis, or they could be mild, only into the epidermis, which is, of course, the best case scenario. 
Um, and, but usually it doesn't stay that way as they age. Usually those lines are gonna end up um, going into the deeper dermis. Caused and made worse by facial expressions. Can't stop that though, right? Except for I have a friend of mine that even in my 20s, she came over and she would say, Kara, stop smiling so much. Kara, stop smiling. Why? I'm a smiley person. She's like, because you're making lines. You have to stop. You have to learn, train, freeze your face. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so not me. And she still does it though. And she's 50 and she looks 30. So good on her. But <laughs> obviously most people are not going to do that. Um, sun exposure is one of the biggest culprits to wrinklers. They are ones that, I mean, you definitely should lecture on SPF high 50 plus staying out of the sun as much as they can, um, wearing hats, just wearing a ton of protection, smoking, of course, it's going to make it worse. And then dehydration. So they're ones too, that if you sell skincare at your practice, get them on really, really good hydrating products because even just by hydrating the epidermis is gonna help them tremendously. Keeping moisture in their skin is very important. And we'll talk about that too when we go into um, our Sinclair products and which ones can help which condition. I'll be talking about the Dermafuse and, and that is a great one for, uh, for wrinklers. Okay, so now I wanna show you kind of what you're looking at as they age and really knowing which category they fall into. So this is Maria Shriver when she was in her 20s, when she first started as a journalist at the Today Show. I mean, she's perfect, right? Um, thick skin, no lines, settled, lots of facial fat, everything's good. Then this is her around 40, so mid-age, and we can obviously see a change. We can see that she has a more mature look because she has naturally lost facial fat, um, but she doesn't have jowls. Um, she is starting to get those lines that set in, not terribly though, um, but there is definitely a change. But then you jump into, and I actually just found like a really great photo of her. I could have found a photo of like her with no makeup and like coming out of the grocery store because there was some online that really showed the deep wrinkles. But anyways, I just grabbed a good photo of her. Um, really, if we were standing with her in person, we would actually see the deeper lines on her forehead. She very much has the skin like her mom. Of course, she's doing things to not get to that point, right? She's doing cosmetic things to help, um, which is great. So I don't think she'll ever get to the point of her mom, but she's genetically dispositioned for it. But we can definitely see those lines are starting to, to really settle in around um, the eyes, anywhere that she's making expressions. Again, though, she doesn't have jowling. She doesn't have that heavy lower face. She still kept kind of that V-shaped face, right? So she really, if you look at her, only has that one issue and it's those deeper lines that create her to, to look a little bit older. So common treatments for a wrinkler. Neurotoxin, I put it at the top. <laughs> and a lot of these things that I'm gonna talk about it's not just Sinclair, right? I am going to tell you about our products and which ones to use for different conditions. But when you really are looking at somebody, patients are all going to be very different. So it's so important to be really well-rounded in your practice, right? Energy-based devices are not going to do everything. Botox isn't going to do everything. Filler is not going to do everything. Threads aren't going to do everything. But when you put those together and you have all of the, the things, maybe you don't believe in threads, I'm just throwing things out there. But if you have these things to offer them and you know that like your toolkit is fully stocked, there's really no stopping you, right? You'll be able to improve and help them so, so much. So there will be things outside of Sinclair that I'm gonna be talking about because it's important. Neurotoxin, oh my goodness, like number one for a wrinkler for, for the upper face. Um, retinoids, retinoids are really going to help them like on a nightly retinoid. Um, it can be, uh, of course, if you're doing like energy-based devices and things like that, 
they'll have to pop off before those treatments. But for their like daily maintenance, retinoid is great for them. Now you do have to be careful too though. If they're a wrinkler with thin skin, sometimes retinoids can be problematic. They are there to turn skin cells over and really help thicken the skin, but long years of use and they already have thin skin, it can thin it even more. So just be careful with that, but it is a, it is a good option. Microdermabrasion is great for them. Laser resurfacing is great for them. RF resurfacing is great for them. So I'll talk about our resurfacing technology and why it's so amazing for wrinklers. Um, skin tightening, of course, we need to, to get that collagen uh, stimulated. Laser rejuvenation, same thing, heat-based treatments, right? They are going to respond so well to heat-based treatments, ultrasound, Sunscreen is a huge one. I already spoke about that, that you really want to lecture that in. And if they get to the point where it's just needed, a facelift can help them as well because it will stretch, you know, stretch the skin and not have as much uh, deep wrinkles. Okay, so a sinker. So a sinker, this is a, a good example of a sinker, Angelina Jolie. So beautiful, right? But I'm gonna have, um, oh wait, maybe I didn't use her. I, I don't think I, no, I didn't. I used Lisa Bonet for my celebrity example. But if you Google Angelina Jolie, you maybe even remember when she was 20 and now her appearance and she doesn't have jowls, she doesn't have lines. We can tell she's older and that she's mature for a reason. And that's because of the, the, she's a sinker, right? It's that hollow appearance to the skin. She's lost a lot of fat um, and she's starting to, to get really sunken in the areas. Okay, so sinker, characterized by volume loss to give a sunken hollow appearance. Uh, the most common places are absolutely the temples, um, under the cheekbones in this area. Uh, eyes start to become very hollow looking and the mid face starts to, to sink in uh, quite a bit too. And can either have thin or thick skin, doesn't always mean that they have thin skin. Um, and eye sockets, temples, cheekbones and nose become more prominent. So that's why I was talking about like, they may even say like, I feel like my nose is getting bigger. Well, all the other things are kind of sinking in, right? They're losing the fat, they're losing the bone mass and their skin is becoming much thinner that everything else appears to be, you know, larger, like a nose. Um, the eyes become larger because the bones are more prominent and, and a bit more hollow or a lot more hollow for some cases. So celebrity example of a sinker, Lisa Bonet is a perfect one. Here she is in her 20s and lots of facial fat, right? She's perfect. Lots of facial fat, no wrinkles, no hollows anywhere, really. <laughs> There's not even hollows under her eyes where um, a lot of us have those in our 20s. She doesn't have that. Here she is mid-aged in her 40s and you can start to see it. I was looking for a different photo of her at this age without her braids covering her temples, but I was having a hard time finding it a good one, but you can see that her temples are really starting to sink in even at that age. Uh, hollows under her eyes and then a lot of hollowness here in the mid face and cheekbone area. And now um, I think she's late 50s, um, but her age now you can see the temples are really starting to, to get sunken in. Eyes, uh, obviously, nose is becoming more prominent. Lower face is starting to sink in. But she doesn't have jowls. She doesn't have deep lines. I think you, we can visually see that she has thin skin. So just helping thicken the skin is going to help a lot. But it's not going to do everything, though, for a sinker, right? Just like um, I was highly recommending Botox for the wrinkler plus energy-based devices. On, the, on this um, case, energy-based devices, absolutely, we want to thicken the skin. A lot of times, they are going to need filler or fat transfer because again, there's only so much you can do with energy-based devices. We don't want to just put filler in because if the skin still looks really thin and, and not healthy, then the, the result of the filler is not going to look great. So doing a combination of both, absolutely, that's going to 
really, really, really help. So fillers um, or fat transfer, um, retinoids to help thicken the skin, uh, microdermabrasion, I'll talk about why in just a bit, RF skin tightening, uh, and then laser rejuvenation. I did not put a facelift on here because actually they really are not a candidate for a facelift. When, and I'm sure most probably plastic surgeons would agree with that, that if they're very sunken and you do a facelift, it's incredibly unnatural looking. So you have a client that doesn't have surgery, even, of, even if they wanted to, available to them. How are you going to help them? Again, you have all those tools in your box, right? You have ways of thickening their skin. You have ways of filling those areas after you've done a series of treatments with the energy-based devices. Now you fill in those really hollowed areas. Um, so I love that. It's exciting uh, because you can do so much for them. And last one, Sagger. Uh, that's not me, but I am. <laughs> I wish that was me. Uh, I do fall into that sagging category like Katie Holmes does. And you can visually see it. I think we are exactly the same age. Um, and we have like the exact same problem. I, I mean, I, I probably have more problems than her, but as an example, you know, we're starting to get this. Like my nasal labial folds here are becoming much heavier. When I was younger, that wasn't the case. Now it is. Um, here in the lower face, it's starting to accumulate the fat and the loose skin like, um, like her. So um, Sagar has a little laugh. Have an appearance of loose or excess skin, as you can see on here, uh, that visually see that he's a sagger by his lower face. Um, the most common places uh, to start to droop are the cheeks. So like I was telling you when we were looking at Drew Barrymore, it's not just here that it's starting to get heavy on her. It's also here starting to hollow because it's all starting to drop. So cheeks start to drop. It starts to create a heavy nasolabial fold. Um, of course, jowling is a big one. Eyebrows are another big one to start to drop. Uh, and then of course, the submental and the neck kind of go hand in hand with the lower face. Daggers typically have thick skin and many times oily. So that's really the only positive going for a sagger is typically maintain that thick skin throughout, throughout your life. Of course, it's not gonna be as thick as it was when you were in your twenties, but it's not like a visual thing that it's like, wow, their skin is really thin. It, that kind of never happens with saggers and many times oily. If I've met you before, you've probably heard me talk about my, my acne battles when I was younger, right? It's a, it was a huge negative then. I was 18 with acne and ended up with acne scarring. So that was awful, but I knew it would come in as a positive when I got older because that oil is keeping my skin thick. However, I can't stop gravity and aging happening and starting to, to lose, um, lose all that structure and it's starting to drop. Face shape starts to change to a heavier lower face or uh, more of a square face instead of the beautiful V. And then due to the loss of connective tissue, the subcutaneous and sorry, and subcutaneous fat loss. So like I was saying before, our, our bone density, our muscles, those play an important role, plus the upper fat in the face all give us structure here. And when we lose it, we lose that structure plus gravity plus aging of skin, it all starts to drop down. So many darker skin patients are saggers um, because usually they have thick skin throughout their life, right? They're usually not ones to, to have noticeable wrinkles. Um, Asian skin types, uh, African skin types, we usually don't see like deep lines on them. Um, they can get a sunken appearance, of course, but a lot of times they do have sagging of the tissue because they do have that really nice thick skin. Okay, so our celebrity example of a sagger, Drew Barrymore, you can see young, plump, again, she's perfect, right? Um, upper face, a lot of fat volume, a lot of structure there. V, now middle age, I think she was about 30 there. We can visually start to see it hollow here, dropping here, starting nasolabial folds, and just starting the jowling. And then here uh, at about 50, a lot more drop 
here and a lot more attenuation here. She has very, I mean, look at her. And I think she's 50, I think she's 50. Um, but look at her skin. It looks just as thick as it did when she was in her early 20s. So thick skin is there, check. She's not sunken. You know, she's not like a visual sunken um, client. A little, like there's of course always gonna be a little, there's a little bit more of like a hollow around her eye, but it's mostly because everything's sagging. So she really only has one big issue. Well, the big issue, but one issue. Uh, so common treatments. Threads are a common one to lift the brow, the lower face, um, fillers, that kind of sounds funny, right? Well, they're sagging, why are we gonna put fillers in? What you do is you add filler to the cheek area, the upper face region builds this up and then pulls all of this up. And that is something that I try to do every two years is fill the cheekbone area. And it does give me that lift to help with the V shape. So that is definitely something I recommend for saggers. Um, retinoids, uh, retinoids are kind of good for everyone, um, unless they have really thin skin. Microdermabrasion, RF um, contouring, we'll talk about that, like decreasing that fat. Of course, we want to do that. And also tighten all the skin that's dropping. Laser rejuvenation, ultrasound, or facelift is, is really great for these clients. Again, most people don't want to go under the knife and have a facelift. Most of us are not going to in our lives can't afford it, don't want to do it, yada, yada, yada. But if we talk about people that would fit into a facelift category, a sagger is the number one. Um, but now think like with the heat-based treatments, we can tighten that skin. With the heat-based treatments, we can shrink the fat. Once we really uh, tighten the skin and, and shrink all that fat volume up, then after adding the, the filler here to lift, maybe pop in some threads to do a little extra lifting. I don't need a facelift. You have all the tools in your back, check. Okay, but there are people that are combination, right? Like I was talking about earlier. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, there are people that are combination. I'm, I'm actually probably a combination. I, I visually see myself as a sagger, but I'm probably more of a combination because I do think I'm a bit more like Cameron Diaz where it's hollowing and sagging, unfortunately. So Cameron Diaz, um, I have a, an example of her throughout the years. Um, again, perfect 20s, nothing wrong with the face. Um, here, she's about my age, I think she's about 40. Uh, we can visually see starting to hollow around the eyes, even hollow around the lower face and starting to drop a bit. And then here, now I think she's about 50. I think her and Drew Barrymore are right around the same age. And we can really visually see that hollowing around the eyes. Her nose looks larger and more prominent. Um, again, our tip starts to droop uh, for a lot of us. Um, so that can start to happen. And then you can visually see that she's starting to get heavier in the lower face and that accumulation of, of uh, some loose skin and some fat. So she's a good example of a combination. Another good example is, um, oh, I just forgot her name. Why did I forget her name? Judd. I'll just call her Judd. I can't think of her first name. Ashley, Ashley Judd. Perfect in her 20s, nothing wrong with her face, perfect V. Um, then we start to see a little bit of hollowing mid age and a little bit heavier here in the lower face. Now for her, I don't know if you've seen her, like when she got all of the work done on her face, she's starting to look better now, but she, I don't know what it was. I'm just guessing it was a lot of filler. Why she would do that is because of her hollowing in her face, right? But it ended up being too much, whatever she did, fat transfer filler. I don't know. Um, she wanted to fix the hollowing, but then it really made her heavy with her sagging, which is unfortunate. So that's why I say like, do the heat-based treatments first, do the natural things first, then decide. We just need a little filler on the upper cheeks to lift it just a tad bit, give it a little bit more structure or one or two threads just to lift it a little more if they need it. But I would always focus on the natural um, treatments first, then go into like the filling, the threads, the da-da-da-da-da, whatever you're doing, 
neurotoxin, I'm not going to add that into the, um, into the equation because I never stop that. I always have that in my face, but you know what I mean? Like you don't have to overfill them. You can do things natural first. Okay. So now we'll talk about treatments that are best suited for the three types of aging. So I just really added in all of our technology and I'm just going to talk about which ones are great for which category and why. So these are the staples. The reason why I call them staples is because they go in conjunction with everything that you're doing in your practice. So pristine, it's a diamond tip microdermabrasion. I actually have a slide for it. So there. Uh, I'll play a little video while I talk. So you can visually see what the pristine the diamond tip microdermabrasion does. Uh, maybe I won't talk over this. Maybe I'll just let you watch this for a second. I don't know if you guys can hear the music. It's kind of loud on my end. Okay, so I'll, I feel like this is taking too long, so I'll talk. Um, what you're seeing there is microcirculation. So the blood flow is moving to the tissue. Those are all of our cells, um, our dead skin cells that turn over every 30 days that gives us that rough texture to our skin. Uh, so really what it's, what it's doing is two things. One, it's, it's, it's blah, blah, blah. one, it's exfoliating our dead skin cells. So removing them, giving us a beautiful glow to the skin, getting rid of um, the dead skin that gives us that dull, dry look. And the vacuum increases microcirculation that then brings oxygen and nutrient tissue. So it's making your skin healthy before you do everything else to it. So quick microdermabrasion, then radio frequency, or then laser resurfacing or whatever, whatever it is that you're doing. You're making the skin healthy. Microdermabrasion is good for all three types of aging. It's just so good for everyone. So it's going to be great for your wrinkler. It's going to be great for your thinker, and it's going to be great for your sagger. It is an absolute staple to have in the practice. I can't say that more. Um, and then it comes with 10 different tips. I won't spend too much time on this because I have a lot to talk about today, um, but different coarseness to, to the tips. So you can treat someone who's 70 with thin, dry skin. Um, and that's why I was saying it's good for everyone. It doesn't matter if they have thinner and, and dry skin, you have a tip for them. that's not super coarse and it's just going to make their skin healthier. Um, you have really coarse tips for like your oily, acne scarred skin. And then you have your specialty tips, a smooth one that helps congestion and sinuses. Um, that's a good money maker in the spring. Uh, your small ones for around the eyes, pulling out blackheads, and then your larger one for the body, keratosis flaris, the little red dots that you get on the back of arms and the legs, ingrown hairs, back acne, it's great for really all of those in full body. And you have a very large tip. So you can do a full back in just a few minutes. Okay, so then the Dermafuse. So the Dermafuse, again, is also a staple because it's really the end to all your combination. Pristine is the start, right? It gets the skin prepped for everything else you're doing. Then you do RF. Then you do laser rejuvenation. Then you do da-da-da-da-da. And then you, um, you boost those results with the Dermafuse. So the Dermafuse is a true infusion device where it is taking different serums and it is driving them very deep into the skin by creating little pores, little micro channels through the tissue. Moreover, once it gets down deep into the skin, and wherever it's going, whatever serum you're using, the cell, whichever cell wants to absorb these vitamins, nutrients, will open. You drive the ingredients into the cell. Once you're done doing the treatment, then the cell recloses. It's phenomenal. It's actually based on a Nobel Prize winning discovery in 1909. Now we're using it for cosmetics. But now thinking of the serums that we have and all the good that we can do. So collagen booster. For every one of those aging types, collagen booster is going to be phenomenal for them. We are using ingredients 
putting those ingredients inside a fibroblast cell. A fibroblast cell is responsible for producing collagen. So yes, I can do that with heat-based energy, right? I can do that with radio frequency. I can do that with laser, but you're using ingredients like vitamin C and iron to not only tell the fibroblast cell become active, but also produce healthy collagen. Your results are that much better. So collagen boosters, absolutely going to be great for wrinkled skin. Absolutely going to be great for sunken skin because you want to thicken their skin, right? Um, and then really great for, for sagging skin. Of course, we want to boost collagen for tightening. Intensive hydration. This one is super, super ideal for your wrinklers. This is something that I would have them on if they're a deep wrinkler, have them come in once a week for about a month and you will be blown away with the change. A microdermabrasion, then intensive hydration will make a wrinkler look night and day different. So even just those two, two, uh, two things, it's incredible. And then lipo -alem. lipo -alem is putting ingredients into the fat cell and helping to um, stimulate lipolysis. So we'll talk about how RF stimulates lipolysis. After you use the radio frequency, you stimulate lipolysis, which means we're taking the ingredients inside a fat cell and we're excreting them. They're coming out of the fat cell and then we're pushing them through the circulatory system. The lipo -alem right after that is just gonna boost those results make it happen faster and make it happen more efficiently. I won't talk about bright or smooth because that's not falling in line with the webinar, but bright is for pigment and smooth is for acne. So we have five different serums. Okay, so lipo -alem for your sagger, intensive hydration for your wrinkler, collagen booster for all three, microderm for all three. Okay. So now we'll talk about how radio frequency helps these three types of aging. We'll talk about um, the, our body contouring handpiece, our ST handpiece, and then our VFR handpiece. So I kept this slide in here from a, from a different PowerPoint. I just threw it in. Just a reminder that radio frequency is colorblind, so it's incredibly safe on dark skin types. So you can, you know, if they're um, a darker skin type, Asian skin type that has a lot of sagging skin, for lasers, you have to be careful. You have to work gently on them. They may not see results for a while. So you say, forget it. Let me just throw threads in and call it a day when you really didn't want to do that. Radio frequency is colorblind. So you can turn it up. You can be more aggressive with your energy on your darker skin. Okay. And then actually, I also left this slide in for a too. What is radio frequency? It's a form of electromagnetic energy. When that energy comes in contact with our tissue, it creates our cells to oscillate, to have a molecular movement. Reason being is the body and the cells, they don't know what this is. What is this? And it rejects it. And that rejection process creates our cells to move around and start to generate heat. We can generate heat in different areas with different hand pieces. I can generate heat and get a biological response where the fat is. I can generate heat and get a biological response where the collagen is, or I can generate heat and get a biological response in the epidermis, a very, very superficial part of our skin. So the ST, ST is going to be good for all three, for a wrinkler, because we need to build collagen to help those, those deeper lines or fine lines if they're younger. Um, a sinker, because of course we need to thicken the skin so they don't have that hollow appearance. And a sagger, because of course we need to stimulate collagen to lift everything that's sagging down. So ST is going to be good for all three. Here's a quick video and I'll talk about it really quick that we have the controllability of putting the heat where we want it. So if it was like Drew Barrymore who has very thick skin, but it sagging, I know I need to put the heat deeper on her because of her, her thick skin, right? I need to put it where her collagen is to make sure to lift everything. On the opposite end, Lisa Bay, you can visually see she has very thin skin. So for her, uh -uh, I don't want to put it that, that deep because I could hit fat. That would be a problem. I want to keep it more superficial where her collagen is. So it's controllable. Um, 
we have exact protocols. You choose this depth for this type of skin and you're good to go. Uh, so just know anybody that walks in, you're able to treat them. Doesn't matter their age, doesn't matter their, the um, skin type that they are. And then here's an exact depth of measurement for the different, the three different uh, levels that we can put the heat. The VFR. So the VFR is going to be good for all three skin types as well, but different reasons. So I'll break down because the VFR has multiple biological responses. Some of these will do much better with one biological response where another type of aging would do much better with a different one. So we'll talk about that. First, I'll play this video. I love these videos. They just, I think visuals are so nice. So the VFR is uh, using bipolar energy. It's delivering from one row of tiny electrodes to another. And you can actually see the tiny electrodes create little um, openings, channels in the skin. There they are. And those tiny little electrodes, when delivered to the tissue, um, give different biological responses. So one end of it, we can put it deep where the collagen is and create a microthermal injury to stimulate fibroblast cells. Or we can keep it really superficial. I think that's what it's showing right now to create ablation. What does that mean? It means we're just removing the outer layer of the skin, but in a very, very safe way. And the beauty of this handpiece is that we can do, if we need to, both at the same time. We can do ablation and coagulation deep for collagen remodeling and resurfacing of the skin. Um, we have a cooling plate that's going to make it very comfortable so the patient really doesn't have to do numbing cream. Um, but it's also going to keep it very safe for your darker skin types because we're keeping the epidermis cooled when we're doing it. And then additionally, the next thing I think it's going to show you is that we have a vacuum. Oh, it probably already showed it and I missed it. It has a vacuum. The vacuum is coupling in the tissue to make sure that we're always nice and flat on the skin. So that is for safety, but it's also for comfort because that vacuum is strong. Um, it's tricking the nerve where they feel the vacuum more than the heat. So it stays very comfortable for them. So now what type of aging needs which biological response because this hand piece so much? I'll start with the wrinkler. The wrinkler is going to be ideal for both. Like I was saying, the hand piece can do both coagulation and ablation. They're going to need both. Why? We can visually see on a wrinkler that their texture is usually very, very poor because of the lines, right? Because of the expression and because what their skin naturally wants to do is wrinkle. So the texture always needs improvement. So they're gonna need some ablation, but also the lines are typically very deep. So they need collagen remodeling to help the size of the wrinkles, right? And to help get rid of them or if we can't get rid of them, really, really improve them. So ablation and coagulation. What that means is that um, we are choosing our pulse duration, the speed in which we're putting this energy into the skin, we're choosing it right in the middle. When we do the middle, then it's quick enough, we're delivering the heat quick enough to ablate the outer layer of the tissue, but also slow enough to go deep for coagulation. Now, uh, let's talk about a uh, sinker. A sinker doesn't necessarily need ablation, right? We can just visually see they're hollow. So for them, we just wanna thicken the skin. So we're not doing ablation. We're doing just deep coagulation or fibroblast cell stimulation. So for them, the pulse duration is gonna be very long. So we have an option, I'll back up. We have an option between 10 and 100 milliseconds. So let's say I'm using five joules of energy. If I put it at 100 milliseconds, meaning I'm just delivering that energy very, very slowly, all it's doing is it's going deep and it's feeding the deeper dermis, creating a microthermal injury in the tissue and the fibroblast cells get excited. On the opposite end, if I choose 10 milliseconds, energy is very quick going to the skin at a very fast speed that it's so quick that it just chars, burns the surface of the skin, but in a controlled way, obviously, and that's ablation. So what we're doing for the sinker is that long pulse duration, slowly stimulate collagen. 
on a sagger, same thing. All we want to do is tighten the skin. So they don't need ablation. They just need deeper coagulation, uh, collagen remodeling for overall lifting. Uh, what's great though, too, is that if they just need coagulation, there's no downtime. You don't have any marks on the skin. Um, there's no pain to it. Usually they never have to use numbing cream. Wrinklers, because they need a, uh, they do need ablation, maybe they will need numbing cream and there will be little dots on the face for about five to seven days. Those can be covered up with makeup after, um, after 24 hours. So it's social downtime. Okay, I hope that helped. I just looked at the time, so I'm gonna speed it up. V-form, so the V-form, is also radio frequency, also heat-based treatment with vacuum. So this one is only going to be good for your saggers. I mean, it's good for a lot of things. It's good for cellulite and body contouring, but when we're just talking about the three types of aging, it's just your sagger. Why is that? Because the V-form has vacuum and RF, we're pushing that heat very deep actually into the subcutaneous. And what we're doing is we're building a certain temperature, 39 to 42 degrees Celsius, holding it for a certain period of time, 10 minutes in the fat layer. And that is going to stimulate lipolysis where we take the enlarged fat cells, the accumulation of fat, and all of the ingredients come out, including the water in the fat cell, then it's in the extracellular matrix, then the circulatory system grabs a hold of it, it moves through the circulatory system, and it burns it for energy in a different place in the body. So it's shrinking the fat cells in a natural way. But additionally, at the same time, we are putting the heat in the fat, we can also put the heat simultaneously in the dermal layers where the collagen is. So amazing. What is their issue other than they may need to have a little bit more structure here on the upper face? What's the issue here? Fat accumulation and loose skin. This handpiece can do both at the same time. It's going to tighten the tissue, shrink the fat, and really help bring that V shape back. Okay. Um, I don't need to really talk about this um, much more just because of time, but it does have a vacuum. And of course there's an importance to it. Like I was talking about, it really pushes that heat nice and, and deep. Uh, and also it's moving all of the, the fluid through the circulatory system. So it's a huge positive to have that vacuum. Uh, additional technologies, light-based technologies, IPL, which is phototherapy, and then our long pulsed Indiag laser, which um, is, more than just skin rejuvenation, like our IPL can do hair removal, acne, uh, pigment, vascular. The Indiag can do body vascular, dark skin hair removal. But what I'm gonna talk about today is the fact that both of them can do skin rejuvenation. So we'll talk about the IPL first. And I just went through that, right? Everything that the IPL can treat, but what we're gonna focus on is water. So these are our four chromophores that the IPL is interested in. Uh, that's attract. It's attracted to these light-based uh, molecules. Melanin for hair removal and pigment, hemoglobin for vascular lesions, porphyrin for acne clearance, water, 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 water. Water is what our focus is because our skin hopefully has a lot of water that all of our tissue is a target. Therefore, we can heat all of our skin to get skin regen benefits. So again, collagen, brightening the tissue, um, giving a glow to the skin. Do these in the same day. You can do pristine to the skin. You can do your radio frequency handpiece like the V-form and shrink the fat and, and stimulate collagen. Then you can go in with the IPL and do the full face for overall collagen remodeling and, um, and new cell skin renewal, which gives us the glow to our skin as well. So really big on combination, which filter you would want to use, which wavelength that you would want to use with the IPL is the 580 nanometer, which on it says skin rejuvenation. Why? Because that wavelength is highly attracted to water. With this IPL, we can treat every skin type very safely. 
because we have different pulse configurations. Um, I won't fully go through that, but of course, if you are new to Sinclair and you wanna hear more about it, um, you can always reach out to us, or I have lots of webinars on this that explains how we're able to treat uh, every skin type safely. Next is the Indiag, same thing. What is an Indiag? It's a laser and it's using a medium inside the laser, which is called neodymium yttrium aluminum garnet. So that's the actual like solid that's inside the laser. And that gives us a wavelength of 1064 nanometers. And it is highly attracted to water. So why are we using it? Because of the skin rejuvenation benefit. And the tip is really small, just like the ST is, the bipolar RF that I went through. Both of those tips are really small, so you can get around those hollows of the eyes. That's so important to be able to really reach this area for patients that are sunken, right? Both the IPL and the Indiag are going to be good for every type of aging. Wrinkler, because it rejuvenates the tissue. Um, Finger because it collagen and it thickens the skin. Better, same reason. So again, using different technologies stacked on top of water just gets you there that much faster. Okay, here's the chromophore absorption chart, and you can see the wavelengths at the bottom. 580 nanometers is what the IPL uses. The high water peak, 1,064 nanometers. It's a very high water peak, so it's very attracted to the water. It will build heat really nicely and it will build heat very safely no matter what skin type they are. And then it does additional things like it will remove the pigment and vascular issues that they have. So huge bonus there, right? Usually it's not just we're sinking, we're sagging. We're, we also have pigment and broken capillaries and this and that. So these hand pieces can address more than just one thing. Like I said, the V-form, it can address the fat and skin tightening. Well, the IPL can address water in the skin for rejuvenating the cells, but it also is going to knock out any pigment issues they have, any vascular issues they have. So you're just making them really happy really quickly. Um, and then this can treat the Indiag laser. It's actually created for dark skin. So it treats every skin type very safely. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys some before and after photos um, and ideas, right, of what these technologies can do when they're in combination with one another. I don't have photos of the combination I was talking about, like pristine, then your radio frequency handpiece, then your light-based uh, technology, then your Dermafuse collagen booster. I don't have that. Um, I just have combination photos of just a couple technologies. Uh, but you get an idea of the nice improvement that you get when you're just using energy-based devices. But then as a practitioner, you can look at this patient and go, okay, we've done five STs on the lower face plus Dermafuse collagen booster to boost the results. It looks so much better. Now, what can we do? I mean, I would have done even more to her with energy-based devices and it would have looked even better. But let's say that this was our result if we did everything. Now, what can we do, right? This is when you go, okay, the skin texture looks amazing. We know that the skin is a lot healthier because it's hotter, it's tighter, it's thicker, all the things. So maybe now she just needs a couple threads in the lower face and a little filler in her cheeks, right? Like there's so much you can do to really take these complications away for your client, for your patient. Um, here's, oh, sorry, let me go back. She's a stagger. Okay, so now we'll go to the next one. She is a wrinkler. So doesn't really have like dowling or fat issues. She is a little bit sunken in as well, but when you look at her and what her probably uh, insecurity would be is the wrinkles, right? So here's an idea of what microdermabrasion, ST, and dermafuse would do. It's phenomenal. So you can see now like that combination, making the skin tissue with microderm, then going in with your energy-based devices, then boosting it with the diffuse, how happy you can make them by just starting out with your natural uh, results, which are your technologies, then going in with other things if you need to, which for a wrinkler, 
their, their only option really, other than neurotoxin, um, is going to be that energy-based device, right? It's, it's going to give the most natural look for them. Another um, idea of a wrinkler and just one ST and then VFR right after, phenomenal, right? It can really transform uh, somebody that wrinkles. Here's an idea, like I was saying, your darker skin types usually are the ones that fall into sagging. They usually never wrinkle because they have that nice pigment in their skin that's protecting them from the sun. So usually they're the ones to sag because they are losing bone and bad and muscle in the face. So gravity starts to take hold. Um, but here's an idea of three VFRs deep for tightening and then six dermafuse to boost the results. Oh my gosh, amazing. Look at how heavy her nasal labial folds are uh, to begin with. Uh, look at the deep crease here. And then, wow. I mean, let's say you did everything you could for energy based wise, and she ends up with this result. She's probably super happy. But then all you have to do again, add a little filler to the upper face. Maybe that will just, wow, now she's got the perfect V with energy based and filler, or a couple threads, same thing. Uh, always think of what you can do to combine, but always start with your, with your technology first. Our idea of a wrinkler, and for her, it was ST, IPL, and a couple peels. I actually didn't put that on the list for three types of aging. I just put retinoids, but the same thing. Like if you rewatch this webinar, uh, when I say retinoids, they would also be good for, for a peel. And I always think people should do a peel. They suck. I hate going through them. But they do make a big difference to your skin. And I always try to do it once a year. But I mean, you can visually see, wow, that's like 10 years off of her face. Okay, um, time-wise, I'm gonna stop now. I was gonna introduce you guys to the pre may but I've done that on a different webinar. It's our brand new device, super exciting. Uh, but I've done, a, I've done a couple webinars talking about the pre may So I can say, it's okay that I skipped it on this one because of time. Um, but if you want more information, we just launched it. It's a, it's a fantastic device. You can always reach out to us. And to make it easy, here is a QR code that you can just scan from your phone and it will take you to our website if you have any questions. If you're already a customer and you have any questions on like the webinar or want more details on something that I spoke about, you can always email us. Um, viora.info at sinclair.com and they'll pass you on to me um, or uh, somebody in my clinical department. And then our phone number 888-415-1192 and then our website, viora.com. But you can just scan that if you want to go to it. And then um, our handle for um, social media. So you can always direct message us on Facebook, on Instagram, and we'll be able to get right back to you. Thank you.